number 25 on the uh, Six Cycle Oddball series. And I want to thank all the people that have uh, sent me uh, notes and so forth and asked questions. It's, I've learned a lot from the people that have written in, and uh, I hope I helped some of them. Okay, we're going to start off today. This is uh, the number two engine, and I found it had insufficient su compression. So what I'm doing is testing the valves, and I took the, the valve off, and lo and behold, I forgot to put the gasket on that one. So that's why it didn't have compression. But I'm going to show you how to test those valves. What I've done here is I have a nylon piece with a taper on it. And due to that fine thread, it's only 40 threads per inch. Another way I'm using them is because I can just screw that on that taper and make a nice tight seal. Then in order to cut down the amount of leakage there is around the valve stem, I'm gonna put a few couple of drops of oil on there. Okay. And then this is a, a, a brake a break, uh, tester for an automobile. You can see how slow that goes down. Now that valve would be good. If I pop the valve, I see it holds nothing. But this valve, is pretty good. You, you don't get a heck of a lot better than that, no matter how much you grind them, because you do have some, some leakage around the stem. But you can see that if I pump that up and I pop it, it, uh, it goes right down quick. Actually, you probably hear it. So that's holding pretty good. So I can test the intake valve the same way. The difference with the intake valve is that I have to use a rubber cork to go up into the carburetor. Just a little rubber stopper and I've got a, a, a syringe needle run through it and I can shove that in the carburetor, hopefully. I get three hands here. You gotta close the needle valve so that you don't get leakage there. Now see, that one doesn't hold as good, so I think I would resurface that valve. Just regrind it. It's, it's too fast. It's going down too fast. That's not holding good. So I'm going to regrind that valve too before I put it back together. So with this off and the spark plug in, I just hold my thumb over there, and you can see it has compression. And it has, has good vacuum too, so you know the rings are good. See, it won't pull out of there. If I, if I let it go down the bottom dead center and plug it up, you can see you can hardly push that up in there. You can hear the air pop out of there. But that's the way to check to see if you have valves. And that, it'll also tell you that your uh, seal on your spark plug is good and your seal on your cylinder head is good with that off. I've had the engine running and I brought up the coil that I had it running with so I can't show you it running but we have a short clip of it running that I tried to take with without Jim here but by the time I picked the camera up the doggone thing would stop okay what I burned up was the last one of these that I've ever had I found this in the drawer I didn't even know I had it and it was missing a terminal but I put the terminal back on and it worked so I used it but the problem with this is, in a set of points, is if the engine stops with the points together, in about 10 seconds, this thing will just smoke. It'll, it'll be dead. And uh, I ran the engine probably, I would say, a half an hour. In short, I was breaking it in to run it five minutes. It gets hot. I shut it off. And I was up to like 10, 12 minutes after multiple runnings. And uh, I went to get a drink of water, and the engine stopped, smoked the coil. So, back to the it. electronic coil, electronic uh, systems. I got a buzz coil on there now, and it comes from uh, a company named Outpost Enterprises, and it's I think a design by Jerry Howell, and it's a buzz coil, and it works pretty good. But 
The problem is you have to have a coil with it. And the coils that you get nowadays, I mean, this would work beautifully, but you can't get those anymore. So all I can get is, is coils like this. This one came out of a, a, a Honda uh, moped, I think. I bought it off of uh, Amazon, and I have bought, I think, five different coils. This is the one that Outpost Enterprise sells with it. But the problem with this is, is the thickness of it. If you mount that either this way or that way, you've got to have an awful thick base. I'm trying to get away from that. So I bought some coils that don't have these big things sticking out on the side. And uh, it's, it's a much neater installation than this. But uh, what would be really nice if you could find one with two terminals on the primary coil, because then you can do you can use a set of points. You can't use a set of points with this because you have to ground the points. You have to ground the engine to one side of this coil, and that doesn't work because you, the points are the ground for the primary coil, and the secondary coil is also the ground. So if you short those two grounds together, it doesn't work. But uh, there is such a, a way to use it, and that's by using one of these. This is another design by Jerry Howe. It's called a buzz coil, and it's now sold by Outpost Enterprises. And I think it, the kit costs like 25 bucks, and you have to assemble it yourself. And what this does, it eliminates uh, that ground. I can't tell you exactly how it does it, but they're grounded on two different places, and you don't have the engine ground hooked to the points. So you can actually use a set of points with this and one of these coils. And that's the way I have it hooked up now. And I'm having trouble with the spark plug now again. And I, I have found out that these spark plugs evidently have uh, more resistance in them than a normal small spark plug. If you can see, this is the, the quarter inch spark plug. And if I turn the ignition on and I energize the points, hear that buzz? There's a spark in there. But if I put this spark plug on it, I'll show you. This is the CM6 that you use in this engine. And you do it. It's a different noise. And what's happened is the spark is internal in the, in the coil. And I can't find out where because I can't see inside the coil. But it's actually inside of that coil somewhere there's a spark. So these plugs won't work. And I don't know why. Why there's a difference. Now if I hook this directly to ground, I've never done this before. Let's try to see what happens. Yeah, see, there's no noise. So, hope I didn't blow the circuit board out. Let's try this. Now, this is another type of plug. Put that on the magnet. And that's working good. I don't, he probably can't see the spark, but there's a nice blue spark on that one. So, what I've discovered is this plug will fire perfectly in, in, it's out in the open air, it's not under compression, but these plugs wouldn't work at all. And this gap here on this one is about 15 to 20 thousandths. But I had to knock this one down to 11 thousandths, and it's still arcing under there a little bit. But as you can see, that's, that's making a spark now, but it's intermittent. So there's something different about these plugs. Either they're resistor plugs and they don't have an R on them or something else. But uh, I'm going to knock that. I've got that at 11 thousandths. I'm going to knock it down just a hair more and then we'll try and see if the engine will run with it. Okay, I've got that down to 9 thousandths now. And it's given a good spark. So let's put that in the engine and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to give that a whirl.
Better put the drill to it, I guess. Oh, might help if we put the gas line back on it. I should show you. This is a, a, a quick filter that I've made up, and it works out pretty good. What I have in here is this piece of fuel line, which is typically get in an auto parts store. This is for chainsaws and so forth, a small fuel line. And then this piece of larger tubing, which is, I'm not sure what this is made of. It's, it's a soft, very flexible tubing, and it's a little bit smaller than the, than the OD of this other one, and they slip together real nice. Well, inside there, I have a filter. And this is the, the filter that I showed before for the uh, automotive, what do they call them, injectors. This is an injector filter. And this works really beautiful. It's got an excellent filter. You can't even see the, 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 the screen in it is so fine. And it works excellent. And all I do is push that inside a piece of this other tubing and as you can see, this is full of crap from that, from that gas tank. Get out of there. I guess you can't see it, but it's, it's loaded with uh, brass pieces. It's just loaded right up. Boy, of course they don't show on camera. Nope, you can't see them. It's just little tiny, tiny flecks of brass. Can you see them? Don't move. Let me uh, point to it. It's right in there. There's there's little flecks of brass. Okay, again, don't that, move. That it filtered out. I can see it. Yep, right there. You can get on uh, Amazon, and uh, I think it's like twenty of them for for ten bucks or something, and that includes the shipping. And they're really beautiful. What I do is I take a piece of brass tube, and then it just fits over the filter part, but it's a little smaller than that brass part in there. And I shove it inside of this tubing, a little more than halfway. And then I take the tube out, put this in here, and then put the other end in here, and I have a filter. That's all there is to it. You don't have any clamps or anything. Doesn't even pop. Doesn't do anything. Now we know we've got, got spark, but I'm still suspecting it's that plug is uh, not working right. I move this down to less than nine thousandths and I get a continuous spark on it. But what I found out when it was at ten thousandths is that it would sometimes spark and then sometimes I'd hear the noise down in here where it was internally arcing. But if I blew on this, it would arc again. And there was nothing that you could see on it. It would just change. And just by blowing on it, it would make it spark again and it would go five or six times and then stop. That's arcing continually now. Let's try that again. But uh, definitely the problem I'm having is, is something to do with that buzz coil or the spark, the spark plug itself, actually. Right. Tighten this up. Give it another try. Get the drill. Whoa, it fired then. <laughs> I suspect that it has something to do with that spark plug. Uh, so we just had it running, as you can see, and I had this homemade spark plug in there. So I had changed the coil, because we think we had an internal leak in the coil all this time, and that's what was causing trouble. I'm gonna try the other spark plug now. This is the original spark plug that wouldn't work before. Might have been going the wrong way.
Okay, let's choke it a little bit here. Okay, see if it'll run with this plug. Look at that, huh? And blaming the spark plug and so forth, we find out that this coil has an internal arcing in it somewhere. And if it has any resistance at the spark plug, it'll arc internally and won't run. If you put the spark plug out here, with this, for some reason, it would give me a good spark. But the minute I put it in the engine, it wouldn't give me a good spark. All the experimenting I did with this, I even took the Hall effect and I, and I installed points on here. And I'll go back to the Hall effect because what we found was the coil was bad, but uh, but this is how the points look, and you can see they're pretty pretty uh, clumsy looking on there, and without that, you don't need all this bracket and so forth. And I've got another uh, thing coming, it's a reed switch, and the magnet goes by a reed switch, and they aren't as sensitive as the uh, Hall effect ignitions, so if you get an irate spark or something, it isn't going to failing. What happens with the Hall effect, if you leave your spark plug lead off or something, it somehow finds its way back to that Hall effect uh, sensor and, and destroys it. And they're not expensive. And if you make them easy to, to install, uh, let me see where I have one here. Uh, I can show you. You can get these Hall sensors and I think it's, it's a, they're about a, less than a dollar a piece if you look through uh, Amazon and they come from China. You get they usually sell them in lots of tens, but they, they have a lot of different numbers on them, so you got to make sure you get the right one. But what I was saying about changing it, what I do is I use one of these Futaba uh, plugs. What, what are these? These are extensions for the uh, servos. I think it's a servo plug. Anyway, this will fit right in there perfectly. And... Uh, you can just plug it in like that and you mount this and then you just can just pull that out and put another one in. So I'll show you that when I get it hooked up. And use the magnet and see if that'll work now. And because it was this coil the whole time. And I tried another coil, but I couldn't get the other coil to work at all. The only thing that would work was this model airplane coil and I burned it up. So uh, we're back to uh, where we were before. The engine runs all right. So I'm going to try to put in the, the Hall Effect Ignition sensor and see if that works with it. And this will be the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel if you like what you saw. Thank you.